Welcome to week one of our computer science principle class. This video will give an intro to week one content. First of all, let's talk about the textbook. The textbook is Computer Science Illuminated, the seventh edition. I will be using the ebook version, which is available at vitalsource.com, and you can see the pricing here for the ebook version. There is also a textbook version sold in the bookstore. And here is the webpage for the bookstore. Um, if you get a used edition that's prior to the seventh edition, some of the page numbers may be different, or some of the questions I'll be asking you to answer out of the back of each chapter may not agree with the questions in the latest edition, so just be aware of that. Let's start by looking at the beginning of chapter one, and you see a big onion. And this big onion is a metaphor for a computing system and learning computers. That this textbook will take the approach of going through each layer of the computer and focusing on learning that. What are the layers? Figure 1 1 displays the layers that the author will cover. And we'll start with an overview today. In fact, chapter 1 is called the big picture. And starting in chapter 2, we'll go to the information layer. That's all about the bits that make the numbers, the bits that make the pictures and the images and the audio and the video, and how does all that work. Then we'll move out chapter by chapter, covering each of these layers throughout the semester. And here is one of my favorite sentences in this section of the chapter. It says that each layer in itself is not complicated. In fact, a computer actually does only very simple tasks, and it does. It's something that you can do. It's as simple as one plus one. I'm not kidding here. One plus zero. It just does them so blindingly fast that many simple tasks can be combined to accomplish much larger and more complicated tasks. Computers never get tired. They always stay on task. The remaining of this section briefly covers what each of the chapters will go over. Next, we'll look at abstraction. And I have an entire video on abstraction and some quiz questions for you on abstraction. Section 1.2 of the chapter covers the history of computing. Now there's the hardware history and then there's the software history. So we're just going to cover the hardware history today and we're gonna wait a few more weeks when we get a little bit heavier into programming to cover the software part of history. Uh, one of my favorite sections in this chapter on page 25 are some predictions. So uh, let's read a, a few of these like uh, Thomas Watson, and you might have heard of the computer Watson, the supercomputer Watson by IBM. Well, that was named for Thomas Watson. And he says, I think there will be a world market for maybe five computers, 1943. Hmm. Uh, what else? Uh, there is no reason anyone would want a computer in their home, 1977. Let's see if anything's a little bit later. Folks. The Mac platform is through, totally. I think I remember reading that in 1998, and we see that's. This week I'll ask you to get started in a couple of labs, and the first lab is Lightbot. It's really a game, but it's a game uh, that requires you to use the same logic that you would use in building a program. I think you'll have fun. You'll find the first couple ones easy, but you may be challenged as you get to some of the higher levels. That's typical with me whenever I play a game also. Next week, I'll ask you to do some reflection regarding uh, your lab, like that. The next lab that you're going to do is an App Inventor. Now, App Inventor is a block-level programming language. And this first one, you'll just be following videos and uh, just learning how to get started with App Inventor. In fact, I'm not even going to have you write code yet. All you're going to do is get used to how to be in the App Inventor environment and how to dra drag some of the items, some of the widgets uh, onto the uh, App Inventor form. The last lab that I'm going to ask you to do is optional. If you're wanting to get an A in the course, I'm asking you to do the coursework, pass a binary quiz, and 
get a minimum percentage on these optional labs. So Small Basic is an actual programming language that's not block level. You'll be writing the source code and not dragging and dropping blocks to write your code. You will be doing a Hello World one. I'm going to have you do a Hello World application in App Inventor. And you will also be doing a Hello World one in Small Basic if you decide that you're going to do these optional labs. So that's a brief summary of week one. Welcome to class. Hope you have fun.